Hello, my name is Andy and I'm part of the SDR Play development team. In this video we're going to look at the new features and improvements that we've made to SDR Uno 1.1 and how that will improve the overall user experience with the RSP. We will do other videos to cover the features of SDR Uno in detail but for now let's get started with a clean install. Download the software from our Windows page on our website at www.sdrplay.com or through the Start Here process. The Start Here process is better for new users to SDR as it takes you through all the steps necessary to get it up and running. The, the Start Here process also allows you to register your device with us. We strongly urge you to register your device as it allows us to provide you with the most appropriate support for your region if you require it. We recommend that you disconnect any RSP devices from the machine at this point. Run the installer and follow the prompts. The defaults are suitable for most people, but you can customise things like the installation directory if you wish. After the software has been installed, you will be prompted to connect your RSP device. At this point, please wait for the device drivers to be installed. You will see the progress of these in the taskbar. As soon as they have finished, you can start SDR Uno. This version is the same as the previous version in that the first window that appears will be the main window. This has two primary functions. The first is to control the RSP, which we'll cover in just a moment, and the second is as a hub for VRXs. These can be a powerful feature that many people can forget about. Every instance of a VRX, and SDR Uno supports up to a maximum of 16 of them in any one instance, receives the full bandwidth of IQ samples from the RSP as specified in the main window. Each VRX can also post-process the stream data in a different way or even feed the audio to other decoding applications. So let's take a look at the main window in more detail. We have really focused on simplifying the RSP1 controls whilst maintaining the functionality. We have moved the less commonly used features into appropriate settings panels. You can see that the LNA and AGC buttons are as they were on 1.04 although the AGC functionality has been greatly improved and is enabled by default. The AGC controls the IF gain slider that you can see here. When the AGC is disabled the IF gain slider becomes active. A quick point about the slider and the LNA switch. The LNA has a gain step that is additional to the IF gain range. When the LNA is switched on and off we automatically adjust the IF gain slider to absorb the LNA gain step so as not to create a jump in the noise floor. The LNA gain step is 24 dBs up to 420 MHz, 7 dBs at UHF and 5 dBs in L-band. In between the AGC control and the IF gain slider is the sample rate and decimation controls. In this release of SDR Uno we've really simplified this functionality. Select the sample rate you want to use from 2 MHz to 10 MHz and then select the decimation rate. These two parameters combine to give you a final sample rate which you can see in the top right hand corner. SDR Uno will then select the best fit IF filter bandwidth for the final sample rate you have selected. For example if I wanted to see 250 kHz of spectrum I could select a 2 MHz sample rate with a decimation of 8 and that will give me 250 kHz. You will notice in the top right hand corner of the main window the final sample rate is shown along with the IF bandwidth selected by the UNO. In this case it is 200 kHz. The IF mode is also shown here. At this point I should say that for all SDR devices there is a trade-off to be made between sample rate bandwidth and CPU load. At the moment I'm running on an i7 and you can see that the selecting by selecting 10 MHz of sample rate I'm still only using about 15-16% of CPU load. I would keep an eye on the CPU load and reduce the sample rate if you have to. So in most circumstances these are all the controls you will need for the RSP1. There are additional controls and we'll come to those soon. Let's get our windows set up. Click on RX. This brings up the RX control panel. This is where you specify frequency, modes and other settings specific to this VRX. Click on SP1. This brings up the main spectrum window display which can be resized like this. You can also bring up the output spectrum display by clicking on SP2. This window again can be resized. 
SGR Uno is a very modular system as you can see. The way you keep track of what window relates to what VRX is with the number system on the top right hand corner of each window. The first digit refers to the instance of SDR Uno that is running and always begins at zero. The next two digits relate to the VRX number shown in the main window next to the SP1 button. If I start another VRX by clicking add VRX and then I click on the RX to bring up the RX control panel you will see that the number is 0-01 in the top right hand corner. One other thing to note is that new VRXs are disabled by default. This is shown by a red square next to the RX button. Click on the red square and it will turn to green to signify that the VRX is active. One last thing to mention about VRXs is, is that VRX0 always controls the RSP LO frequency. Every other VRX is slaved to VRX0 and the frequency in those other VRXs cannot be set outside of the available bandwidth as specified in the main window. Before we start to look at some signals I just want to show you some of the settings panels as these have changed since the last release. First let's look at the input settings panel. We now have the ability to show the input level as gain as well as gain reduction. The default is gain reduction for continuity from previous releases but if I switch to gain here you will see that when I press play the display in the top right hand corner of the main window shows the receiver gain instead of gain reduction. Also note that the polarity of the IF gain slider has now changed such that the top of the slider will always either show the highest gain or the highest gain reduction depending on which mode you want to work in. This is also where the IF mode control is and if you want to switch between zero IF and low IF modes. The CAL menu, short for calibration, is also different. This release of SDR Uno provides a calibrated S meter and power meter measurement and is referred back to the RSP input. If you want to add extra gain or loss due to preamps or cable losses for example you can add that in here. Relating to the S meter automatic calibration by default we support the IARU S meter standard that S9 is minus 93 dBm in VHF instead of minus 73 in HF. You can disable this in the settings miscellaneous panel which will enforce the HF value across the entire frequency range. The only other settings window to look at right now is the channel skew panel which you will find in the opt menu in the main window. By default the automatic DC offset and IQ correction compensation schemes are enabled but in here you can disable the automatic IQ correction scheme and apply manual settings. Let's start by setting our center frequency. In the RX control panel I click on the frequency which now shows zero and importantly notice that the box has turned green. This means that SDR Uno is waiting for input and remains in that state until either carriage return is pressed to confirm the frequency input or escape is pressed to cancel. A common mistake people make is to forget that and they cannot understand that why even when the frequency they want is showing in the display SDR Uno isn't tuned to it. And that's because nothing happens until carriage return is pressed and the box turns white. Now I'm centered on my frequency I can select the mode I'm interested in and sub mode if required and make sure the correct filter preset is selected. I can set the audio volume or the squelch level down here and if I need to see more bandwidth I can go back to the main window and change that on the fly. I can also use the zoom buttons in the SP1 display to zoom in on the spectrum and then scroll the frequency bar left or right. The power level shown next to the frequency display in the RX control panel is also calibrated. The RSP can now be used as an accurate power meter. In tests we've seen approximately 1 dB of accuracy over greater than 100 dB of range. We also have made some other changes based on feedback from the community. The waterfall in combo mode used to flow in the opposite direction to the other modes. It now follows the other modes and can be inverted in just the same way. The mouse wheel scroll direction was the opposite to what people expected. So now scrolling up increases the frequency and scrolling down decreases the frequency. If you want to go back to the opposite direction this can be changed in the miscellaneous settings menu. Again, based on feedback, we've added some extra step sizes to the frequency window. 
right click on the frequency display and you can select the step size. Scrolling the mouse wheel outside of the frequency window increases or decreases the frequency based on the step size that you've selected and this is displayed on the left of the frequency. In the previous release of SDR Uno we tried to present filter presets that were useful to the digital decoding community. We have put the LSB and USB filter presets back to what they were before and the digital fi filter presets are now presented when the digital mode button is pressed. And now I'd like to mention some other useful features of SDR Uno. The RDS information can be displayed by clicking on the RDSW button in the RX control window. The default program type mode is set to Europe, but it can be switched to North America in the RX control window settings panel under RDS. The notch filters are also very useful. To configure them, click on the EXW button to bring up the EX control window and use the left and right mouse buttons or the scroll wheel to specify the bandwidth and frequency of the four configurable notches. Then you can enable or disable them in the RX control window and you will see them working in the SP2 output spectrum display. A couple of other pointers, if you need to modify the output filter you can do that directly in the SP2 window by clicking on the red lines and dragging them. Also in FM there is an AFC function in the EX control window which I can open here and you will see the frequency automatically tuning to the nearest signal. You can also save your window layout in one of the 10 workspace locations. Simply hold the left control button and left click on the workspace field and then left click still whilst holding down the left control button on the location you want to store the current layout to. I would just like to point you to an excellent document that is constantly being updated by Paul Jones and Mike Ladd. It's called the SDR Uno Cookbook and a link will be in, included in the video description. If you have any comments or suggestions on how SDR Uno works, we have a specific area for SDR Uno on our community forum. If you're a Facebook user, there is a large and growing community on the independently run SDR Play users group. There is always plenty of help and advice for new and experienced users alike. We're always interested to hear how people are using SDR Uno and the RSP and try to incorporate suggestions and improvements where we can. We have a lot of plans for SDR Uno and the RSP product range going forward. So please check our website, our Twitter and our Facebook page for information on more updates. All of the links can also be found in the video description. I would just like to thank all of those that have made suggestions or reported bugs so far. We are focused on improving the user experience with SDR Uno and the RSP and these do help us to do that. Our thanks also go to the beta testers who are constantly pushing us to deliver the products you really want to see. We will do more videos focusing on the detail of SDR Uno but I hope this has given you some insight as to how to use it with the RSP. We will also be doing more webinars and we will post information on the content and timing of those as soon as we can. And thank you for watching.